I remember the first time I went to visit the Zen Center, Zen Buddhist Center. Uh, we have one in, 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 in uh, Cambridge. And I uh, here the professor is wandering in. I met this very charming uh, Zen teacher. And I uh, said to him, can you tell me a little bit about the teachings of Zen Buddhism, please? And he looked at me and smiled, didn't say a word. And he pointed to some of the people there who were s sitting in sort of a meditative uh, sitting posture. And he said, I said, you mean I should sit just like that? But aren't you going to tell me, you know, what to think about? Or so uh, uh, I got the message, which is that you, you sit first, you meditate first, you open yourself to the possible, and then maybe later you can learn a little something about what the, what the message of, of Buddhism is. Now, you see, I like that idea. I like it. I, I, I like the idea of, of, of entering into the, 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 the Christian life by experience. That's not foreign to us. It's not foreign to us. And those of you who are here in, in, our, in this Baptist church who are Methodists will remember John Wesley, who, 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 whose whole emphasis throughout his life and ministry was on the direct experience of God. He'd already accepted the, the Anglican beliefs and the prayer book and all that. But he said at that chapel where he was praying, my heart was strangely warmed. That's a classical phrase in, in uh, Methodism. My heart was strangely warmed. He had an experience, and he wanted to reintroduce the notion of the, the priority of experience in Christian life, out of which beliefs and doctrines and theories and theologies grow. But without that initial experience, uh, it doesn't happen. So I see that happening everywhere. And one of the movements that I've been interested in, in studying, of course, is the Pentecostal movement, which uh, unfortunately, at least among uh, white people in North America, has been infected by a kind of fundamentalist creedalism. It didn't start that way. Pentecostalism started in America out in, the, uh, in Azusa Street in Los Angeles about 1910 with an emphasis on the direct experience of God the Spirit, coming into people's lives, touching them, enabling them to heal, to express themselves uh, openly uh, in prayer, what they call speaking in tongues, things like that. And this is, the c this is one, of the, one of the kinds of Christianity which is growing so rapidly, including in mainland China. So that's one. Uh, the second big change, I see this again across the board in, wor in world Christianity, is the movement from what I call hierarchy to community, from hierarchy to community. A distrust of institutional hierarchical structures and a thirst for being part of a community in which you know people, you are valued by people, you value them, they value you, and you're on a kind of a journey together. Back to what St. Paul called the people of the way, moving, moving along, pilgrims, supporting each other, uh, and not being, not necessarily uh, uh, undermining hierarchies, but just not defining what it means to be Christian uh, by uh, a hierarchical structure that you're drawn into. Uh, that's, th that's fading. That's fading. Including, I would s insist, in the most hierarchical of all Christian churches, namely the Roman Catholic Church. I live in a, in a section of the, of the United States which is very heavily Catholic, uh, up around the Boston area, New England. And some of the most vigorous Catholic congregations there uh, have formed groups which they call the Voice of the Faithful. Now, the Voice of the Faithful is, is are, are these are these are good. They don't want to stop being Catholics. They're very good Catholics, but they're saying we Catholic life should center on the congregation, on the Voice of the Faithful, and we want to have a voice in selecting who the bishops are going to be and how who's going to dispose of the property. This this movement rose largely when they started closing. Catholic churches because people were moving away or, or, or weren't uh, attending them anymore and closing them, and they uh, insisted they weren't going to let that happen. It's an anti-hierarchical but still Catholic movement within the Catholic Church, and it's going to grow. I, I'm, I'm 
mature. It's going to grow in, in, in influence. Uh, the, la the other one I wanted to mention is the one that I've already touched on, which is this uh, movement away from uh, defining Christianity as a series of beliefs that you adhere to uh, toward a, 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 a life of faith. Faith means fidelity, faithfulness. Are you faithful to your family? Are you faithful to your spouse? It doesn't, it's not an intellectual or a cognitive er enterprise. It has to do with the way you live your life. Fides, uh, faith, wha is what it's about. Uh, uh, we're I, I, uh, I think we're, doing we're moving that way. And in the midst of this, uh, why should it be surprising that uh, in, in the evangelical community in America, which is largely been thought of as a more conservative branch of American Protestantism, it's the one I grew up in, there's a phenomenal rediscovery of the centrality of Jesus. Surprise, Jesus, central to Christianity. Uh, uh, there was a whole period in, in evangelical history when that was really not so much the case. It was, a, it was an emphasis on the, the, the kinds of beliefs about Jesus that you needed and a very, uh, a very strong emphasis on Pauline theology but even a kind of a minimizing of the centrality of the Gospels, the parables, the healings, Jesus' confrontation with the power of the Roman Empire and the collaborators and the temple elite in, in Jerusalem. That's coming back very strongly now within American evangelicalism. I think it's a very, very good sign. Okay, so I'm about at the end here. I'm, uh, and I want to just reiterate, if I can, before I leave, that this has been my first visit to Huntsville. Uh, and I've had an absolutely splendid time here. I've been uh, warmly received every single day, shepherded around, fed more than I should eat <laughs> at every meal, and uh, have met just lots and lots of people who have, like you, who've listened carefully and asked uh, very good questions and responded alertly to what I've been saying. So I, I, have, I have to say I'm, I'm so glad I came. I've been to three or four other places uh, throughout the South, a sort of a little trip through the South, New Orleans, Norfolk, uh, Richmond, and uh, I'm ending up here <laughs> in Huntsville. And so I thank all of you, uh, both for, for this trip, David, you and the other uh, downtown churches that sponsored this whole series and all of you for being here tonight. Thank you.